Sonic, the heart of your system. Hi and welcome back to a new video on my table. I have a CPU collection. You probably saw the Intel Itanium video and I came across the Intel Itanium because I purchased this CPU collection for my birthday. It's not my birthday while I'm shooting this video, but once it's up, it should be my birthday. Anyway, um, it's a very interesting CPU collection. We have multiple CPUs starting from, I think, 1974 with the first Intel CPU up to recent Core i7 CPUs from Intel. Everything should be on there. Also the Intel Itanium CPU, which you recently saw in one of the Hardware Legends video series. And yeah, there should be multiple very interesting CPUs in there. We will just go quickly over them. And if there's anything that's really interesting, we can make an additional, more detailed video, maybe do some die shots again or something in this direction. Let's just open it up and see what's inside. First frame starting with a collection of the first 12 AMD CPUs. Starting from a 1969 beautiful CPU, a ceramic CPU contains quite a lot of gold. That's why at a certain point people started to collect old CPUs, also the um, 186, 286, um, 386. All those CPUs were at a certain point collected for gold extraction. Now those CPUs, just the pure value of the single CPU is much higher than the gold they contain. Therefore it wouldn't make much sense to just use them for gold extraction. Starting with the AMD 9300 series, apparently the first AMD CPU. I'm not so familiar with the first six or seven CPUs in this collection. Everything that's prior 1990 is something I don't really know about. and only starting from the year 2000. Um, that's the time where I personally experienced CPUs. Then I'm more familiar with like the 386, 486 or even at the AMD K5. But so far looks quite beautiful. Unfortunately there is one CPU right here. The AMZ8000. Not sure if that's uh, pronounced correctly for the CPU. Yeah, it came off from the glued pad right here and it's stuck on a top left corner right now. We will try to open the frame and maybe somehow fix it back. Unfortunately it's not that easy because it's a completely sealed off frame. I will probably have to contact the original seller or creator of this piece of art and ask him how I can open this and then maybe put it back in place. All right, let's continue. Interesting detail and something you wouldn't find anymore nowadays on the 186 and the 286. You can find both AMD and Intel logo or the Intel slogan on both CPUs because um, there was some licensing going on from uh, AMD side to manufacture those CPUs because originally they used some work from Intel and therefore you have AMD logo and Intel logo on both CPUs. Quite interesting detail. Continuing with the next package. Continuing with the first 12 generations from Intel starting from 1971 with the Intel 4004, 2.3K transistors, 2300, not really much, running at 740 kHz, therefore 0.7 MHz. That's quite slow compared to what kind of speeds we are used to today. Also, if you just look at how the early CPUs were made, they were made in DIP, which means dual inline packaging. We have two rows of contacts, so on each side we have a row of pins. Not that many pins on the first CPU, 18 pins, and then continuing to something about 30 to 40 pins, but that's about the maximum you can get from a DIP packaging. And then starting from 1982 with the Intel 8186, we have the stuff we are normally used to from nowadays with PGA packaging or PGA socket, something AMD is still using nowadays, but very interesting to see the development, especially considering the sizes of the CPU, also packaging wise, going from the 4004 to eventually the Intel Pentium Pro, which is quite massive. It's bigger than I expected. Uh, I've seen Pentium Pro on pictures, obviously, but never had one in my own hand. And Pentium Pro with 5.5 million transistors, that's already quite much, considering that it was 1995. And then, obviously, 
um, the very famous CPUs, the 386, 486, most of you should be familiar with those CPUs, over to Intel Pentium and Intel Pentium Pro. Continuing the journey with the more Intel CPUs, starting from 1997 to 2001 with the Intel Pentium 2. Quite common CPU, I would say, um, going over from the PGA socket to the slot design where you would have the CPU on uh, additional PCB with contacts on the bottom and you just plug it into the main board cache on each side. Then something quite weird, I've never seen this before, the Intel Pentium Mobile. Not sure what those contacts are for, if those are the contacts the PCB is used to, to connect it to the main board or if this is like some cache related thing, not entirely sure. Something more common, the Intel Celeron PGA socket, nothing that spectacular. But then 1998 Intel Pentium Xeon, that is something really weird. You would have the CPU on the bottom, again in a slot card, very, simple, uh, very similar to the Intel Pentium 2. But then you have two additional chips on top and those chips are not CPUs but they contain additional cache. And the special thing about this CPU was that the cache was running at the same speed as the CPU core. It was a linked cache. While, for example, on Intel Pentium 2, um, you have, would have two cache ICs on the left and on the right. They would run at a lower speed than the CPU core, typically like half or a quarter of the CPU speed. And therefore, you would have to link it again, which um, results in latency and also speed loss and on Intel Pentium Xeon you would have a linked speed directly with the CPU core speed and cache speed therefore quite a lot faster. Then Intel Pentium 2 that's something a lot of people should be familiar with again slot design CPU in the center and a little bit of cache to the right Intel Pentium 4 that is starting to become uh, the more recent CPUs from the year 2000. Also CPUs that would get quite hot, but were also quite fast. And on the bottom right, 2001, the Intel Itanium, the CPU which we saw a few days ago on my channel. And the Intel Itanium and the Pentium Xeon in my eyes are probably the most interesting and most beautiful CPUs I've ever seen so far. I think I will also spend more time investigating the Intel Mobile Pentium. Never seen this before. Maybe you're also interested in that. Please let me know down below. Finishing off the collection with eight more Intel CPUs starting from the year 2002 up to 2008. So much more recent Intel CPUs starting off with the Xeon MP. That CPU got kind of famous because it was much faster than the desktop CPUs, had more cache and it was also the first CPU to introduce Intel hyperthreading. Then the Pentium M. Pentium M was kind of not really special but it was very power efficient, was quite fast for the power consumption. Pentium D also very famous CPU used in I don't know how many millions of computers. Then 2006 the Intel Core architecture that is the time when Intel started really to pick up and be much ahead of AMD for multiple years. In 2006 we had the Intel Itanium 2, which was still a fail, even though they continued to produce those Intel Itanium CPUs. In this case, it's still interesting that they decided to have the CPU on this quite thick and uh, massive PCB. Not sure why they decided to go for this very specific packaging. Also, considering the shape of the packaging, we can see a lot of MLCC caps are stuck to the PCB, which are mostly for noise reduction and power improvement. That's why I'm not entirely sure why they decided to have this very specific packaging. Intel Itanium, it's still difficult to find information on those CPUs. So if you know more about that, always feel free to leave uh, comments down below. And then 2006, Intel Core 2 Duo. In this case, 4300, which was more of a cheaper CPU. Uh, I think it only had two cores, if I remember correctly. But the Intel Core 2 Duo was a huge success for Intel and they were much ahead of AMD for many, many years. In 2008, the Intel Atom, which is something I just remember from very slow and annoying netbooks. For whatever reason, it started to become a trend in like 2008 to 2011 to have those very small form factor notebooks. Nowadays you would call them ultrabooks probably, but back then they just had zero performance. Most of them were running Intel Atom CPUs, which were not great. They were just really, really slow. In 2008, uh, finishing off the collection with the Core i7-920 4-core CPU, also very successful. The Nehalem architecture, I think 
They were available with up to 6 cores with the 990X. Very successful CPUs and yeah, very nice. Unfortunately, I couldn't find more AMD parts of this collection. If I can find more, we'll definitely show it to you. Now I will just put them all on my wall in the backside of my studio. So you will surely recognize this in some of the future videos. Now I will enjoy the rest of my day, take some time off and thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Bye.